Hey guys, this is Ben from Playerlands, and today we're going to be setting up a Paper MC Minecraft server. Paper servers are a new server provider for Minecraft servers, and they are really quick to set up. So as whereas previously with Spigot, you'd have to go through build tools to set up your server, Paper MC just allows you to have one jar file, I mean, as you'll see in the tutorial, uh, that you run to start your server. They're insanely fast, and they've got full plugin compatibility, so this gives you complete control over your Minecraft server. So the first half of the video will be showing you how to set up the server so that you can play on it locally. And the second half will be showing you how you can open up that server to play with your friends and family. And it is um, important to note here that this is just for people you trust. So it is just for your friends and family as you're gonna be giving out your personal IP address. As you'll see in the video, I cover mine up so that you can't see it. Uh, I would recommend that you do just use this for your friends and family. So for creating public servers that allow you to um, open it, say you wanna open it to the whole Minecraft community, um, you'd want to use a dedicated Minecraft server provider. Uh, there's a lot out there if you just Google it. Um, uh, but for this tutorial, right now, we'll be looking at setting up a server that you can just play with your family and friends. So, uh, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to head over to java.com and you're going to want to click on Java Download. This will take you to whichever the recommended version is for your operating system. And then you're going to want to click Agree and Start Free Download. That's going to download the Java JRE for you which is just the Java environment, which allows you to run Java files and stuff. I've already done it, so I'm just going to cancel that for now. But it's a really easy install process. You just click install. It installs it all for you, and then you're done. Secondly, you're going to want to come to papermc.io. You can also just Google papermc, and it will just take you straight to papermc. Um, come on over to downloads. And you're going to want to get whatever the latest build is. So at the moment, we're on paper 1.16.4. And you're going to want to click this black kind of like blob. Um, as you can see, your number will almost certainly not be the same as this number. Um, so don't be afraid of that. Um, as you can see, they get updated pretty much daily. So um, yeah, don't worry about that. So we're going to click on that. That's going to download our paper thing. If you're on Chrome, it might say something like this can harm your computer. Don't worry about that. Just press keep. Okay, so that's downloaded. Come into our desktop. I'm just gonna paste paper here. I've already got a server set up, so I'm just gonna ignore that for now. Um, so we've got our paper file here. We're just gonna make a new folder. We're gonna call this our paper folder. And then just drag our paper jar into there. Then we can open up this file. Um, I'm just gonna rename this to something a little bit more simple. So I'm just gonna call it paper. And now we need a way to actually start running this file. So we can't just double click on this, even though it says it's an executable jar file. That's uh, not exactly what that means. So we need something called a run.bat file to get the server up and running. So we're going to right click file, new, not file, sorry, just right click, new, uh, text document. Doesn't really matter what we call this because we're going to open this up now. Go to file, save as, and we're going to say uh, run.bat. And make sure you save as type all files. Okay, and then hit save. Cool. So now in here, we just have to write a little bit of code to tell our jar, um, our run file to run the bat file. So what we're going to do is we're going to type in Java and then a hyphen, a dash, capital X, lowercase mx, and then I'm going to say 1024m. And what this means is how much memory we want to use to run the jar file. So depending on how much RAM you've got installed, this could change. So 1024m is one gigabyte. If you say you wanted half of that, 512m, that would be half a gigabyte, 500 megabyte, or you know, how much, however much, uh, how much you want. Um, the more plugins, the more people on your server you've got installed, the more RAM you're going to want to run it. But I'm just going to do 1024m for now. So we're going to want to type that out twice, xmx 1024m, and then hyphen jar, and then the name of the jar file. So paper paper.jar. Cool. So we're telling Java to run the jar file paper.jar. Save that. We can delete this old text document and then double click our run file. And what that's going to do is it's going to start populating this file, this folder with everything that it needs to run our paper server. So I'll just wait a second for that to get done. What might happen is this might close this uh, console, uh, might close. Um, and that is fine, and I'll explain why in just a moment. Okay, so as you can see, it closed, and uh, we now have a few other folders and files. Uh, what we want to look at here specifically is the EULA, which is the licensing agreement for Minecraft. 
And basically, you can access it here and have a little read if you want, but you just got to agree not to like sell the game to make money on your own. So we just change this uh, false variable here to true, save that, close out, and run this again. And now it might take a little while to load, but what this has got to do is it's got to download a load of files. It's got to set up um, all the things like bucket and uh, spawn your world. Uh, so depending on how fast your computer is, this might take um, a few uh, a few minutes, but on the relatively decent machine, it's taken, you know, eight seconds. Now, if you did that on something older, like Bucket, that could take up to like five, ten minutes sometimes. So it really just does go to show how quick paper actually is. Cool. So now we have made our server. However, this, as we discussed earlier, is only accessible by ourselves right now. So we can't, it's not yet open to our family and friends. So in order for us to do that, we need to just, um, we need to get a few details. So what I'm going to do is on my desktop, I'm just going to make a new uh, text document quickly. I don't need to call this anything. I'm just going to put some, a few bits of information in it. So um, we need to find out what our IP addresses are and stuff so we can port forward them. So we're going to hit our Windows key, uh, type in CMD and open up our command prompt. And in here, to find out the information we need to find out, we're going to type in IP config. So IP CONFIG, IP configuration, and this is going to give us some of our Windows IP configuration. Now we need to take note of two of these. The first one being our IPv4, which is 192.168.0.91. And the second one, our default gateway, which is 192.168.0.91. Now these are going to be different on your machines, um, so don't worry about that, just make sure that they both should kind of have a similar format of um, four numbers separated by a dot. So just keep a note of that. Um, now what we need to do is we are going to actually, I'm just going to close down this server for now, um, just to save us a little bit of, uh, make sure the fans aren't going off. Go into our paper folder. Um, I don't know why I called it a folder, our paper server. Um, and we're going to want to go into our server um, dot properties file. Now this might not open automatically as a text file for you. So what you can do is you can right click, um, open with, and then navigate to notepad or whatever text editing document you want to use. And where it says server IP, we just want to replace that with our IPv4. So copy that, paste it over and hit save. Great. Now what we want to do is we want to port forward our IP so that our mates can join our server. So we want to go uh, into our web browser, open a new tab, and we just want to copy our default gateway into the URL bar. So as you would with any other link, and then it should take you to your default um, settings page for your router. Uh, now, everyone's is going to look slightly different depending on what provider you're with. So if you've got any questions, just make sure that you contact the person that set up your uh, Wi-Fi and your router, and they should be able to log you into this. Um, so I'm just going to quickly log into mine. Uh, obviously, this is going to be useful if you're on Virgin Media. If not, you can just Google um, Minecraft port forwarding and then the name of your service provider, and it should take you to a tutorial that will do it for you nice and easy. But as you'll see in a second, it shouldn't be too hard to find. Okay, so we're in the settings for our hub. And what we're going to want to do is in Virgin Media, the port forwarding tab is found under advanced settings, security, and then port forwarding. So have a little look around on your own one. You're basically just looking for wherever it says port forwarding. Um, and then that's how you, how you port forward. <laughs> um, so we're going to hit on create a new rule. Now the local IP is your IPv4 address. So if we just go back to that notepad, it's 192.168.0.91. And as we can see, Virgin's already um, automatically imported a few of those things. So we're 0 0.91. The local start port, so for Minecraft, the ports are always 25565. So every time we see port uh, in port forwarding, we just wanna type in 25565. As you can see, it's auto populating that for me because I've done this before. And then the protocol, we want TCP and UDP, so we want both of these. If you can't do both, and you can only do one at a time, just press TCP, then add rule, and then come back, do it again for UDP, add rule, so just have two instances of the port forward. And then enabled, we want to put on add rule, and it's gonna apply these settings, and I'll show you what that looks like in just a second, this can take a couple minutes. 
Okay, so this is just what it looks like. We've got our IP address, which is our IPv4. The port range is of 25565. We want both of the protocols and we've got it enabled. Now, if we sent our mates um, our IPv4 address to try and log on to our Minecraft server, it wouldn't work. So the IP address that we have to use is our um, IP address that we can find online. So if we just make, make a new tab and you just Google, what is my IP? If you're on Google, it should tell you at the top. Obviously, I've blanked this out. This is something that you should not give to anyone that you do not trust. So as we said at the beginning of the video, this is just a server for you to play with your family, your friends. Um, this should not be put out publicly because the IP address can contain some sensitive information. So if you are on a different um, search engine and it hasn't come up at the top, you can go to uh, whatismyip.com, which we showed down here, and this will show you your IP address. So, great, I'm going to load up Minecraft and I'm going to go into the game and just show you an example of how this works. Okay, so I've just started the server up again by pressing that start.bat file and you can see now that it's starting Minecraft server on 192.168.0.91 colon which is our IPv4 address. Um, and I am going to go into multiplayer, direct connect, and then this is the IP address that I have hidden yet again. Uh, obviously you can see the last at the end of it, but um, you can't see the start. So I'm going to hit join server. And as you can see, we're going to join our world. And as it's the first time, it's going to be a bit slow. Um, but yeah, you can see we're in the world. Uh, so now I'm just going to ask one of my mates who's not obviously in my house uh, and is on a completely different Wi-Fi system to just join via that IP just to show that it works. Okay, so as we can see, we got Jake, he's in the server, everything's working great. We can come, play our game, save our world. And uh, yeah, so this is a nice, free, relatively simple way of hosting your Minecraft server to play with your family and friends.